This is truly the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Yes, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy new year. This is the first Sunday of 2021. My goodness, a long time coming. <laughs> Uh, Otis Redding so, wrote a song years ago, and it really got popular after uh, he had passed, but it stated that it's been a long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. But we are excited that God has yet given us another year, another opportunity, another day. And because he has given us another day, there are brand new mercies for us on this day. Why? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, hallelujah. And we will rejoice. Yes, we will. And be glad in it. That's not just something that we just say. There is meaning to that. Because God created this day, it's a good day. And since it's a good day, since it's a day, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, I thank God today that he is faithful Aren't you glad that he's faithful today? And not only is he faithful, he is an awesome God, an amazing God. There are so many adjectives to describe our God. But one, one thing that I like to look at is what he told Moses, that I am that I am. And I tell you today that whatever you need God to be in your life, he is just that. If you need him to be a provider, he's that provider. If you need him to be a way maker, he's that way maker. If you need him to be a heavy load sharer, he is just that. He said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. He said, cast your cares upon the Lord for I care for you. And those are the things that we have to remember in these days that he is that I am. Oh, hallelujah. That's something to shout about right there, that he is the great I am. So we're just happy to be with you on today. And as I mentioned, this is a new year. It is a new day. It is a new opportunity. It is a new chance for us to give God praise. And listen, if we're breathing, we might as well give him some praise. Oh, hallelujah. You know, there are some people that didn't wake up today. There's some people that are uh, laying on their back and they, they're not able to give God praise. They're not able to, uh, to listen to this stream possibly on today. But this is a time that we as believers can give God the praise in spite of our situation, in spite of, regardless of our, tri our, our tribulations and our circumstances. He, listen, it is a good time to trust God. Will you trust him with me on today? Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, I have um, an exciting word for you on today. Uh, this is a word that uh, have received multiple confirmations during the course of the week and more specifically throughout the weekend. And I just want to share with you, and I'm a firm believer that the word, the message comes to uh, the messenger first. And as I'm able to uh, take it in and receive it and then regurgitate it and then continue to study. And I'm able to uh, articulate it and form it in a way that I can deliver it to you, God's people. Uh, that's just an amazing thing. And I thank God that he has um, positioned me in a place to be able to do that for you on today. Uh, because I believe that if we would put our cups out, God will totally, totally fill it up. Are you ready for the word on today? Oh, hallelujah. Well, listen, I want to call your attention to the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis chapter two. What better place to start on this morning than in the beginning? Uh, the book of Genesis chapter two, Genesis chapter two. And we're going to lift out three particular verses on this morning. And from these verses, we'll draw a thought. And from there, we'll unpack the mysteries of God's word so that you, God's people, can receive it and it can uh, uh, take root in your life. And then as you hear it, you begin to do it. Oh, hallelujah. And we understand that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it is our prayer that you will be able to have your faith strengthened through this word that we are deliver on today. Well, in the book of Genesis, chapter uh, two, verse one through three, the word of the Lord reads this way. It says, 
Uh, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all of the hosts of them. And the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had made. Verse three concludes this way or says this, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Oh, praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God on today. And I just want to use for a subject this morning, this first Sunday of the new year, January 3rd, 2021. I just want to deposit this word into your hearts and your minds, your souls, if you will, on today. And the subject today is this page intentionally left blank. Oh, what a weird topic or subject or uh, uh, subject for today. But yes, this page intentionally left blank. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all the things that you are in our life, everything that you're doing in our life. And God, we just ask now that you would open up our hearts, our minds, our ears to receive this word from this, your servant. Father, we thank you for every body that is present on this stream and those that may view this from time and years to come, oh God. Lord, we're just asking that you would just open up our, our, our minds, so God, that we can receive your word in the name of Jesus. Father, we're just asking that you would have your way in this particular message. And Lord, we ask for the fruit to be manifested in each one of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, have you ever seen a page or in a bank statement, possibly a contract or other documents that are left blank with the words, this page intentionally left blank on them? Have you ever seen that before? You know, it seems like a waste of paper. Uh, What is the purpose of that? It's it's a it's a bank. It, it's a bank or uh, so, you know, there has to be a reason. It's an important document. So surely there's a reason why uh, the, the people that created this document, they're they're smart people. Right. Would you agree? Uh, so why is the page left blank? As we look at the text and we see here that in Genesis chapter two, verses one through three, the Bible begins to unpack what is to uh, further be the, the, the blueprint, if you will, I believe, for the Christian, for the believer. And he said that thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. If you take taking notes, this is a good place to underline. God ended his work and the work he had made. And, and he rested, there's another place to underline, he rested on the seventh day from all of his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. You see that? He blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Yes, uh, because that in it, he had rested, there again, underlying rested, he had rested from all his work, which God created and Made. Now, it is interesting, it is interesting to me that God would stop and rest. Hmm. Does God need rest? Was he tired? I believe God was setting a spiritual precedence in the world. This was not some random act that he did. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. And the Amplified Version reads this way. Nevertheless, do not let this one fact escape your notice. Beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years 
and a thousand years is like one day. Hmm. We are now transitioning, if you will, out of a new year. And we are into now a new year. Oh, hallelujah. And, and so when we look at this, we understand that in the uh, this time of God is not like our time. And Peter said here that 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 the Lord with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and the a thousand years is like one day. In Genesis, we read that and when the heavens and the earth were finished, it said that God rested. Now, follow me here. There is something. There is something about a Paul. There's something about a pause. Well, what do you mean? Well, uh, when when I was the uh, minister of music um, at my father's church, um, we were responsible for and uh, the the choir and the musicians and all, and even with the uh, the organization within the diocese, and I, we were over the 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 ministry, the music department for all of these churches. And there was one thing that I had to do was to have a repertoire of music. And I had to keep my mind and my uh, focus on the music for various services, uh, celebrations, uh, funerals, whatever the case may be. But in listening to my to the music, I learned to let the pause button be my friend. <laughs> yeah, there would be some songs that would come out and we're trying to listen for the notes and the harmony and the parts and all of these different things. And I would be listening to it and I will often have to pause. Now, things are different now because everything is on on your iPhones and on your uh, your Androids and all. But I remember the day that they were to cassette tapes. Oh, yes. I remember the cassette tapes and that you would have to uh, push stop on some instance and then rewind or push pause and rewind. But then further to uh, the CDs, the compact discs, and that that was where we really perfected it. And we would listen to the song and then we would have to push pause and have to go and write down the notes and then push pause again. If we were listening for that harmony, pause was our friend. <laughs> yeah, well, there's something about a pause. Follow me here. Music, as I mentioned, sometimes has a pause. Uh, in, in slow music, it's 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 longer and drawn out, but in fast tempos, it is shorter. A poem will oftentimes have a pause. Sometimes in the middle of a sentence, but it can be at the beginning or the end. A pause in, in grammar, there is a comma, and that comma identifies the place that you pause. As you're talking, as you're articulating, there's sometimes that you don't just keep talking and talking and talking and talking, but sometimes you pause to go to the next step. One of the greatest poets probably that ever lived said this. Weenie the Pooh, by the way, is that poet. <laughs> he said, the best some things happen when you are doing nothing. Hmm, a pause. Let's talk about that pause some more. A pause is a time of silence. A pause is a time to reflect. A time to rest from all the work you did the other six days. You see that? This page intentionally left blank. You know, going into this, or rather, let's go back a year to date. And I was refreshed from coming back from South Africa. And uh, I had my mind set on what I was going to do and accomplish for 2020, both in my professional life, my spiritual life, the ministry, as well as my personal life, I had already planned out how I was going into this new year. Many of you that were with me uh, at the beginning of last year, you said, you heard me say that this is a new year. This is a new decade. This is 
new energy, new vision, new anticipations. Everything was new because we had never seen it before. Never seen it before. But then the world paused. <laughs> yes, it did. Right around March, middle of March, the world paused. Things didn't operate the way that they used to. People didn't do or were not allowed to do the same things that they were used. As I was rearing up to go to back to South Africa in April, the world paused. Receive information from the airline saying that we are no longer accepting flights into South Africa but due to this global pandemic. It paused. This page intentionally left blank. Follow me here. I wonder if we consider how important the Sabbath is to God. If God set aside the seventh day to rest and considered all that he had done, how much more should we rest? I'm not interested in today arguing or debating if the Sabbath is a Saturday or a Sunday. No, that's not the intent of this particular context. Truth of the matter, if Sunday is the first day, of the week and Saturday is the last day or the seventh day of the week. Hmm. Well, the word Sabbath, it, it comes from the Hebrew verb Shabbat. And that meaning is to rest from labor. That's what we want to focus on. Not Sabbath in the day at per se, but Sabbath in the, it's being a verb that means to rest from labor. And it's used, we find in Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. Now, another point is that Jewish people from Friday evening to Saturday evening was considered their Sabbath. Now, here's some historic context for you. The Roman Empire the uh, emperor, if you will, Constantine the first, issued a civil decree making Sunday, watch this, a day of rest from labor, stating this, all judges and city people and craftsmen shall rest upon this venerable day of the sun. For most of us, that Sabbath is Sunday. But for many who work a job that requires them to work on Sundays, they don't get Sundays off. I look at the healthcare workers and all the other factory workers and those that are essential personnel, if you will. Sometimes they don't get Sundays off. So they have to utilize, here it is, one day they have off for their Sabbath or their day of rest. You tracking with me today? In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3, in the New International Version, it reads, there are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is the day of Sabbath rest or a day of sacred assembly. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. You are, you are not to do any work whether you live. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. Now, I do realize I'm reading out of the Old Testament. And I do understand that the Old Testament, many would say that is the law and Jesus is in the New Testament and Jesus came to fulfill the law. All of that is true. But the principle is what we want to look at on today as we understand the importance of a pause. So the Sabbath is just not a day of rest, but in scripture, it says that it's a day of sacred assembly. What is sacred assembly? To gather together to worship and, and learn about the Lord. Here's what we have to ask ourselves. Are we faithful to the house of God? Jesus said that my house shall be called the house of prayer, a place where we come and we assemble together 
to learn and to worship the all living God? Do we honor the Sabbath in the way that God wants us to? I'm not talking about the occasional vacation, but the days that were too busy <laughs> to come to church or entertain for that matter. We, we, we got other things to do. Sorry, God, you're going to have to wait. I'm going to have some fun <laughs> today. You know, one thing that this global pandemic, this COVID 19 has taught us and even has shown us that we should have grown to appreciate coming to the house of God. Yeah, we, we, we should have learned to understand the importance of assembling ourselves together, not just in religious uh, uh, routine, but to be able to be among the fellowship of the saints the connectivity, to be able to hug, to be able to shake a hand, if you will, to be able to fellowship and be in the midst of all the people that you so love to worship with. You know, God knows something that we sometimes forget, and that is the need to pause. Ah, uh, Follow me here. Listen, pause again to reflect. Pause to refocus. Pause to reconnect with him and not only with him, but with the church family. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 in the New International Version reads this way. Let us hold unservingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together. <laughs> and some, uh, as, some rare, as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. Now, Paul said some people have gotten into a habit of not meeting with the church. Now, there wasn't a global pandemic, so we do understand that there are uh, laws and regulations. And here's a here's a little side note here. Stay, uh, stay tuned as I uh, began to educate and make aware of the way that we would navigate into this new year as it relates to church. Uh, uh, we're participating, as I mentioned before, in a uh, uh, town hall meeting, if you will, with Dr. Fauci. And uh, we're going to allow the science, if you will, to uh, 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 educate us as we uh, seek God on how we are now going to enter back into this setting. Okay, uh, that's just a little side note. But Paul said here that some people have gotten into a habit of not meeting with the church. People like to talk about other people's bad habits. Paul said, I got one for you. Missing too much church is a bad habit, he said. Uh, what, what, what was the purpose of meeting together? Well, in verse 24, he said, to spur one another on to love and good deeds. To encourage one another. How many of you could have used some encouragement this week? How many of you, as you approach the end of the year, could have benefited from the, a, a, a brother -in or a sister -in that, that would just encourage you, that would just lay their hand on your shoulder and say, listen, I'm praying for you and everything's going to be all right. That, that would just speak a word of life and faith into your life. How many would have benefited from that? That sounds like a good reason to pause on a Sunday and tune in to the live stream. <laughs> oh, I don't feel like going to church may have been something that spurred out of our mouths prior to this COVID-19. That's not a good reason to stay at home and time has showed us that. After all, I don't get to stay at home. <laughs> See, I made the 
uh, the, the, the decision that I got to keep on going because I have to provide a word for you. During the pandemic, every Sunday, I've been right here being able to deliver a word that will encourage you. There's 52 weeks in a year, 52 Sundays, and I'm here delivering a word for you. I, don't, I didn't take a vacation, if you will, to be able to step back at home and relax. Now, I get my rest during the week because I still take that time to rest. My Sabbath is not necessarily in context on Sunday, but I do get the time to rest. As a matter of fact, this past two days, Saturday, Friday and Saturday, I rested. I shut down everything. And that's not easy for me to do. But I was able to do it because, again, as I mentioned in studying this lesson, I understood the principle of what God was giving to us that we need to pause. Well, Jesus said we could get an ox out of the ditch on the Sabbath. That doesn't mean that we go looking for an ox to pull out of the ditch every Sunday. There's something that we can be, that there's, there's some things that can be scheduled for another day. Come on, let's be practical about it. This time we share together on Sunday is important. It is, it has, it has eternal consequences, if you will, for each and every one of us. Listen, if I go back to the Old Testament, just follow me here. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 in the King James Version said, remember the Sabbath. And keep it holy. Now, holy is defined as a dedicated or consecrated to God or a religious purpose, sacred. Now, I know it's not always convenient. I know we don't always feel like it sometimes. I know we don't all, I know, I know we have other things that we rather do. I know other people don't necessarily observe that, but, but he says, remember the Sabbath day, the day of rest, and keep it holy. Now, you know that this world that we live in chooses to, on a large degree, to forget about God. But Joshua chapter 24, verse 15 says, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And we understand that this is a day that we are able to pause. Now, why do we go to church on Sundays? Because there is someone we can encourage. There is someone we can spur on and love on to good works. Because we need to be uplifted ourselves. Now, I know that we are in this technology in this virtual age now, and now since we're not going into the physical building, and let me, here's another side note. The church is you, not just the building. We are the church. Paul said, and listen, we are living epistles being seen and read of all men. So in theory, if you will, theologically, we are the church. And the most importantly, because it's the day that we stop what we're doing in our busy lives and we say thank you to him collectively as well as individually. We honor Sunday. We honor that day of worship. And we miss it. But listen, this page <laughs> is intentionally left blank. Now, I like the word intentionally. In fact, I like intentional people. God is intentional. People who do things on purpose are intentional. It's, it's not by accident that they showed up. They were intentional about it. So intentional that you can count on them. You got somebody that you can really count on? So intentional that, that they are not just there but you, 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 they're not, they're not there. You don't worry about if they're not there or not. Or if they're not there, you feel that something is wrong because they are intentional. We put things on our calendars so that we won't forget. 
Now, I am a person that lives by my calendar. If it's not on the calendar, it will not get done. And I have learned now to take breaks and schedule them on my calendar. Now, that may seem mundane to, seem mundane to some people, but it works for me. I have to, I wear an Apple watch. <laughs> and if I sit down too long, the watch will tell me that, listen, it's time to stand up. I can set the watch to be able to give me reminders of things that I need to do so that I can practice and perfect a balanced lifestyle. So, so, so maybe, maybe, maybe taking time to pause should be a part of your daily routine. Maybe taking time to reflect and refocus and recommit yourself to God when things are silent. Maybe it takes that page intentionally being left blank for you to realize that with God, all things are possible if you only believe. Now look, God in his infinite wisdom placed into the world during creation, each creative day. Follow me here. Now, uh, I, I believe that I believe that God was doing something here, and He was showing us some principles. Let's take a look. Day one. Let there be light. Day two. He began to create atmosphere. Oh, hallelujah. Day three. He took dry land and oceans and grass and trees and, and seeds and, and created reproduction. On day four, the sun, the moon, the stars were placed. The day five came along and the animals, the, the, the birds, the, the, the whales, the fish, the, the bugs, the big stuff, the small stuff, the, and you, you, you have to, even small that you have to have a microscope to see it. They created that. Day six, man, he created. You know scripture, he formed man out the dust of the ground. He shaped him in his image and his likeness and he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. But then the woman, he put Adam to sleep because he said it is not good for man to be alone and he took uh, the woman out of his rib, right? The woman then was created and God creates his earthly kingdom and he sets man up to have dominion and power and authority and rule over everything that he had created. He did that on the sixth day, but wait. At the end of this busy week, just when he thought he was done, and I'm taking some liberties here, he gets sidelined by Lucifer. And the whole deal of Adam and Eve from the forbidden tree, all of these things that were happening, there was a fall of man and there was punishment of Lucifer and Adam and Eve and, and the whole thing was cursed. I would say that that was a busy week. <laughs> Told you I'm taking some liberties here. But at the end of it all, instead of going to the next day, Instead of going to the next creation, the seventh day comes around and he says, this page is intentionally left blank. Yes, I'm going to rest. I'm going to pause. I'm going to reflect. I'm going to praise myself for all the things that he did. He said, listen, everything that I made was good. Does anyone feel like praising God right now? Did anybody feel like pausing and giving God praise? We talk about having a praise break, right? But I encourage you today to have a pause. Push pause on your life. Yes, this page intentionally left blank of all the decisions we make throughout the week. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I... All these different things that we have to contend with, it's time to pause. Am I doing the right thing? And should I do better over here? Should I make this happen over here? One decision that you make will always be the right decision, and that is whether or not you keep 
your Sabbath. Again, not as a Saturday or Sunday thing, but as a day of rest. I hope I'm helping someone today. Whether or not you come to church or you, not, or you stream, pause. God knows. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, he says, what you have need of before you even ask. God knows you need a day of rest, of reflection, of worship. How can we expect God to bless us six days of the week if we don't spend some time to bless him one day of the week? Now, I submit to you that it should be seven days a week that you bless God and give him praise. But, but how can you expect him to bless you throughout the course of six weeks when you can't take one day to reverence him? People are like, God, I need your help today. And tomorrow to God, <laughs> right? I'm going to need your help tomorrow. Oh, I've got that other thing coming up on the next day, God. I I'm going to need your help there too. And God's like, well, that's all good. But where were you Sunday? That's all good. But where were you when I helped you the last time? How did you repay me then? See, we get so busy that we don't take time out to reflect, to worship God. This page intentionally left blank. You know, we can create this as being a day of consecration. A day to just meditate on God. A day to just rest. A day to focus and refocus, if you will, the, to get your hearts and your minds in order. The day to set aside that your soul is being infilled with his precious Holy Spirit. This page intentionally left blank. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to get through a hard week when you've been good. <laughs> in church. You see, if we have a bad week, we used to look forward to coming to the house of God so that we can be refilled. But what do we do now in this virtual environment? We can't wait necessarily for the doors of the church to be open. We got to take some time and pause. We got to set up altars, if you will, in our homes and still give God praise and worship and give our reading of our word in and our, our devotions and our confessions and all these things that we have to do. But we, in order to do that, we got to pause. You, you, you see that we can find God is wherever we are if we have his Holy Spirit inside of us. You know, some things we have to change our routine. Sometimes we have to change our routine and we got to make sure that we put God first in everything that we do, whether it's at home, whether it's here at church, whatever the case is, we got to take time for God. That way we'll feel better. That way we'll be encouraged. That way our faith will be strengthened. That way we can say that, listen, I am going through a lot but I just got to take a moment to pause. And, and I like to call them spiritual. Sometimes when we pause, we have those spiritual flashbacks. Uh, I believe it was the psalmist that said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Do you thank him for saving you on today? This page, we should intentionally leave blank. So as, as, I, as I prepare to close, let me share this with you. Where does your blank page land? Where is your day of rest, your Sabbath, as it were? Would you pause and take this moment, this time right here, January 3rd, 2021, to say that, Lord, this page is intentionally left blank. I'm going to pause and commit myself and recommit myself to you. I'm going to pause and reflect. I'm going to pause and, 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 and give you praise. 
If that's you on today, just pray with me here. Say, Lord, help me to understand the value of you in my life. Help me to understand the value of church in my life. Help me to be a blessing of encouragement to others as I faithfully serve and minister to others. Let this be a consecrated day for me where I will reflect on your goodness and learn about your majesty. Thank you for this day that is set aside in my life every week to give you praise and grow closer to you. If you prayed that prayer, God heard you. And this page, this moment, is intentionally left blank. There's something that I read not too long ago, and I had to go back through my notes to find it because I felt that it fit perfect with this message today. And the story is told that one day while printing a report for work, and this is done in first person singular, he said, I noticed a blank page. I intentionally thought that the printer was malfunctioning. I thought this until I looked near the bottom of the page and saw this note, page intentionally left blank. After a sigh of relief, a different section of the report began to spout out the printer. And when the section finished, another page followed with the same note. Page intentionally left blank. A few seconds later, a new page began to print. As I thought about it, I realized that the blank page that came at the end of each section served two purposes. First, it informed me that the previous section had ended. Second, it informed me that the new section was about to begin. Listen, sometimes, oh, hallelujah, God will seem silent in your paws. <laughs> sometimes you will wonder what's going on or where is God in my situation? But it's possible that the current pain in your life may have intentionally left blank by God to let you know that a new chapter, a new page is coming. Listen, this is the first Sunday of a brand new year. 2020 is gone. This is a new chapter. Let's pause. Let's, let's take time out to reflect, to refocus, to Reconnect. This page is intentionally left blank. Do you receive the word on today? This page is intentionally left blank. I encourage you today to take a moment to pause. And while you're on pause, Use that time to reflect. Use that time to refocus. Use this time to recommit your life back to God. You may say, well, pastor, I'm committed to God. And that may be true. But I am quite certain that sometimes we just don't hit the mark. I'm quite certain that sometimes because of trials and tribulations and the enemy's tax, tactics that we fall short. But now's the time to pause. Now's the time to recommit. Now's the time to refocus. Now's the time to reset. And if we do that, God is still with us every step of the way because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. This page is intentionally left 
blank. As we enter into this new year of 2021, and one being beginning, let us end one chapter and begin a new chapter. This page is intentionally left blank. God bless you. Do you receive the word on today? Father, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for this time. We thank you for this day, this message, this opportunity now to pause. And Lord, we just thank you that you have strengthened us in our spiritual life that we can recognize that it's time to pause. But in this pause, oh God, in this resting period, we are going to reflect. We're going to refocus and we're going to recommit ourselves back to you so that when the next chapter begins, we have more than enough strength, more than enough faith, more than enough agility to keep on moving. We can totally and confidently look to Jesus, which is the author and the finisher of our faith, knowing that we are going to be taken care of. And we thank you for that today. Father, we ask that you would touch and look over everyone that is listening to my voice on today. And as we reflect on this message, we will understand that it's okay that this page has been temporary, has been intentionally left blank. You rested after the work and the labor that you did. We can rest so that we can get more instructions as to what you would have us to do. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. So it is so. We thank God for you. We thank God for your support of the ministry. We thank God for your desire to be better Christians. And we trust that something that we said today will encourage you, it will equip you, and again, more importantly, empower you to be a better Christian. So until the next time, remember that you are the favor of God. Go walk in your anointing. God bless you.